In week one of the Cisco CCNA, we also cover chapter two, which is using basic commands to configure a Cisco switch. You could also use most of those commands to configure a uh, Cisco router as well. So when we're configuring a Cisco router or switch, typically the first time we configure it is over a console connection, which uses a console cable, which looks like this. It's got a DB9 serial connection on one end, and on the other end, it has an RJ45 connection. So this RJ45 connection will go into the console port on the router or switch, and then this the serial connection, DB9 connection, goes into the COM port on your computer. Now most computers don't have a COM port, so we use an adapter like this one. And the adapter goes on like this, and then on the other end it has a USB connection. So you can go from your USB serial port to the console port on the router switch. It's a serial connection. So that's typically the first time we configure a Cisco router switch. And why do we use a serial console connection? Because it can be done without an IP address. And the Cisco router and switch doesn't have an IP address to start with. So it's a good way to configure the device. You don't need an IP address. Now, once the switch or router has an IP address, you could configure the switch or router using an ethernet cable and using an SSH client or a telnet client. But, typic but typically, the first time we connect, we console in using a console cable, and we use a hyper, uh, a, a terminal emulation program like PuTTY or TerraTerm or Secure CRT to configure the router or switch. Now, once we're connected to the switch, we are now able to enter commands and configure the Cisco operating system. And the Cisco router and switch operating system is called the Cisco IOS. There's different operating systems for different devices, like a, a Cisco ASA firewall has an ASA operating system, and um, there's the NX operating system. But uh, one of the basic um, on integrated service routers and Cisco switches, catalyst switches, they use the Cisco IOS which is the Cisco router and switch operating system. Now, the operating system, I've got uh, switch prompts here, have different modes. And in each mode, there'll be different commands that you can use. So when you're consoled in to the switch and you you're connected, if the prompt, if the command prompt looks like this, then you're in user exec mode. And in user exec mode, we could put a password so to restrict access so that when you connect to the switch, just to get to this mode, user exec mode, you need a password. And we're going to learn how to do that. Then the next mode is privileged exec mode. And in privileged exec mode, the prompt looks like this. You'll see it and it'll have a, a hash here. Right here, it's a greater than side. You know you're in user exec mode with a hash. You're in privileged exec mode. And we can also set a password to restrict access so that uh, to get to privileged exec mode. So we can put a password that. So a password to get to exec mode is a password just to access the device, and a password to get to privileged exec mode is a password to be able to configure the device. We call that the enable password. We'll talk about that in a second. Then you've got global configuration mode, which looks like this. This is the mode where you have many commands for configuring the switch or router. Uh, the config uh, line configuration mode or config-line mode, and this is for configuring your different lines, your console line or your VTY line to manage the switch or router. And then interface configuration mode to configure your interfaces. If it's a switch, you're talking about maybe your VLAN interface. If it's a router, maybe your gigabit ethernet interface. Or on a switch, it could be an ethernet interface as well. And then the basic commands. The basic commands that are covered in chapter two are these commands right here. And I'm gonna run through them really quickly and then we can practice using these commands and seeing all of this in action in Packet Tracer and on an actual switch or router. So the basic commands are this. I connected to the switch. I'm in user exec mode because I can see the greater than sign. I put in the enable command and press enter and that takes me to privileged exec mode. Unless there's a password here and then I'd have to put in the password to get to here. So the enable command will help me get to privileged exec mode, but we can put a password on it to restrict access 
so that if you wanted to configure the switch, you'd have to put in that password. We'll talk about that in a second. Once you're in privileged exec mode, you can type configure terminal to get to global config mode. So also, if you type enable to get to privileged exec mode, disable will return you to user exec mode. So configure terminal gets you to global config mode. Then I could put in a, a command like host name and then put in the name that I want, like S1 or switch dash one or you name it. You could put in anything you want. In this case, I just put S1. And notice, once I put in this command, instantly it changes the host name of the switch to S1. And I'm still in global configuration mode. From there, I could go to line, I could put in the command line, then console, then zero. So line space console space zero, and that will put me into configuration line mode or line configuration mode. And there I could put a password on the console so that when you connect to the switch for the very first time, you have to put in a global administrative password, which in this case is just Cisco. But I could make this password whatever I want. I could make it Cisco, or I could use a variety of characters, letters and numbers. I could even put in some special characters. Um, but uh, the one thing is, is I've got to start with a letter. I can't start with a number. So in this case, just for beginners, we usually use the word Cisco to keep it simple so we don't forget it. So the password, and then the password that you want, which in this case is Cisco. Then the login command, which forces that when you try to get to the console, you have to use the password. If I want to exit out of this mode, line configuration mode, I can use the command exit or end or control C or control Z. Now, to put a password to get to uh, this privileged exec mode, so that when you type in the enable command, your, your requ uh, requires you to put in a password, you could put in this command within global configuration mode, you put in enable secret password, in this case class. So you could put in whatever you want though. You could put in the password class or class one, two, three, four, five, or whatever you want. This is the actual password right here. And the enable secret says that it's going to be a secret password, which means it'll be hashed. The password will show up hashed in the configuration file. Okay, then to get to line VTY 0 to 15, this command says let's go to a different line configuration mode. In this case, we want to access our virtual terminal lines, and there are 16 of them, starting at 0 and ending at 15. So you could say line VTY 0 to 5, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0 to 15, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 15. And this is how many lines to configure the switch or router can be used simultaneously um, by a user that's trying to access the switch over SSH or Telnet. So in this case, the password would then be, let's say Cisco, and then also you want to force the login. Then exit out of configuration line mode and we're back into global configuration mode. We could put in the password service password encryption and this will encrypt all basic clear passwords in the configuration file with a type 7 encryption which is a hash which is a really poor uh, hash it's a it's it's not a uh, a good hash so not a big deal there um, let's fix that service password encryption and that's the correct spelling otherwise it's not going to work um, to put a message, banner of the day message, the command is banner MOTD, no unauthorized access allowed, or you could put any message you want in between these double quotes. So this is a, a banner message. So the first time you log into the switch, you'll receive a message, whatever the message is in here between delimiters. And the delimiters could be anything. It could be double quotes, or it could be, let's say, dollar signs or it could be single quotes, but whatever it is, one is the, the, this will delimit whatever the banner message is. So banner message of the day, and then whatever you want your message to be in between the delimiters. Okay, the next one is interface configuration mode. You type interface, and then the interface that you wanna access. Since it's a switch, 
and we put IP addresses in the switch on the VLAN. So by default, the switch has VLAN 1, which you can never get rid of, and by default, it has a switched virtual interface called Interface VLAN 1. And that's where you put the IP address by default on a switch. You could also put the IP address on a different switched virtual interface, let's say like Interface VLAN 10 or 11 or 88 or something like that. But by default, there's an Interface VLAN 1, and it's ready to go. So in this case, we're going to use it. So we say interface VLAN 1, and then you go into interface configuration mode right here. You can see it right there. And then you put in the IP address, IP address, the IP address number followed by the subnet mask. And then to activate the interface so you can use it, you use the no shutdown command to enable it. All right, if we want to get out of interface configuration mode, once again, we can use end. We can use exit, we can use control C or control Z. You can use any of those. Then we we're put back into global config mode and we can put in a default gateway. Now, if this is a switch, it has an IP address, it needs to know where the router is if it needs to try to uh, communicate outside of the network. So you'd need, let's say, a default gateway. So for that, you would put in the command IP default dash gateway and then the IP address of the default gateway router on the local network. You can see here, then I typed exit and I'm back, back to privileged exec mode. From privileged exec mode, you can save your configuration. In this case, it's the command copy, running dash config, whoops, we need two ends there, running dash config, startup dash config. So that will copy from the running configuration in RAM to the startup configuration file in NVRAM, which is stored. So that'll save your configuration. Um, also, this would be S1. It wouldn't be switch because we haven't changed the name back. So let's fix that. All right. And then these last three commands are look at the running configuration, show me the running configuration, output it to the screen, output it to the monitor, show me the startup configuration, show me the saved configuration file, um, output it to the console or screen, and then this command will show me my IP addresses on my interfaces. So it'll show all of the interfaces on the switches, including the fast ethernet interfaces or the gigabit ethernet interfaces, but it will also show me the interface VLAN 1 interface, and if I have an IP address set up on the interface, it will show it. It'll show me uh, a brief information about my interfaces and whether they're up or down. So this is the basic commands that are covered in chapter two. Now, um, another thing that's mentioned in chapter two is some basic use case scenarios. So let's say you're in user exec mode, you type enable, you go to privileges exec mode. If you type disable, you go back to user exec mode. Let's say you're in user uh, privilege exec mode. You type configure space terminal, and it takes you to global config mode, global configuration mode. If I type exit or end or control C or control Z, it takes me back to privileged exec mode. And then another important concept covered in chapter two is command completion. So you can do tab completion, but you also can do command completion or get help with the question mark. Command completion with the question mark. So if, I have, uh, if I'm in privileged exec mode in the switch and I type CON question mark, it'll show me all of the commands that start with CON in this mode. In privileged exec mode, it'll show me that there is the command configure that starts with CON and there's the command connect that starts with CON. Now, if I type the full command configure, right there it was, and then I put a space in a question mark, it'll tell me if there's any uh, secondary commands that are needed or secondary arguments. And in this case, if I put configure space question mark, and I'm trying to get not just the complete the command, but uh, command hinting, like is there another uh, command necessary? Is there a secondary command or argument? And in this case, it tells me that terminal is a secondary command that could go here. So terminal, and it's used to configure from the terminal. And so it tells me the purpose here. So this is the command that's available uh, next, and then and a little definition of it, and then carriage return, right? So you're supposed to then hit enter to get it to work. 
So yeah, so the full command is two steps, configure and terminal. Now, um, you can also, not only can you do um, tab completion, so I could type conf and hit tab and it'll complete the command like in Linux or in Windows uh, command prompt. Um, so also you can use command shortening. So in other words, if there's only one command that starts with conf, then I can just type conf. I don't have to type the full word configure. And if there's only one command and there is terminal, then I can just type a T. And if I put conf T, it will basically return configure terminal because command shortening is allowed since there is only uh, one command that has conf and one argument that has T and it will work. Um, and that's it. So those are uh, the commands for chapter two, or that's the basic review of what's covered in chapter two. And now let's practice it in Packet Tracer.